halfway through the week uh, for us that work six day weeks on a regular uh, with me it used to be seven uh, the heart attack slowed me down and uh, made me adapt taking uh, a complete day off uh, but still six days a week now uh, we we you know this sort of like the halfway point for us as well but anyway I wish you the best no matter what's going on in life. Always remember that if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. All right, with that being said, uh, I want before I talk about the things I want to talk about today, real briefly, I want to remind you uh, that I am celebrating uh, my 25th book project. I'm writing my 25th, 25th book as we speak. Uh, the uh, book is entitled Chasing the Ghost. Uh, the quest for black wealth and it encompasses a great deal if you want to learn more about what's in the book you can read you can uh, go watch the black wealth video series which we're still doing uh, but I wanted to remind you because as a part of the uh, celebration for this being my 25th book which is a milestone and I think regardless of what standards you use I think that it's a noteworthy and uh, milestone and something to be extremely proud of, and I am. Uh, one thing that I'm going to do to commemorate uh, this 25th book is I'm going to re-release book number one into print. It's always remained in digital form, ebook form. Uh, we stopped the printing uh, as a matter as a cost uh, management mechanism. Uh, but I'm going to re-release it. That first book was Reversing the Curse of a Fa I mean, excuse me, The Invisible Father, Reversing the Curse of a Fatherless Generation. Uh, that's going to be re-released uh, within the next month. So I'll keep you up to date, kept, keep you up to date on that. Um, also, as a part of the celebration, we are doing uh, a sponsorship for the book to where you can actually sponsor space in this 25th book to pay tribute to, uh, to celebrate, to memorialize anyone uh, that has made a difference in your life. Or you can do it to pay tribute to or celebrate something you've accomplished on your own, something that you feel is noteworthy and you want memorialized in print. Uh, you can do that. And because I want everybody to be able to participate, if there's somebody that you want to celebrate, there's no minimum uh, sponsorship. You give 50 cents, I'm going to contact you. I'll already have your name when you give. I'll contact you and I'll get you a paragraph of who you want to celebrate and what you want to say to them. Um, now, obviously, those who sponsor with more, there are some incentives. You know, uh, Depending on what you give, you can get a copy of the book. You can get your own dedicated page, meaning that no one else will be on your page but you. You can also get the ability to submit a um, photo of the person that you want to celebrate. So uh, the link is going to be in the description box. Go in, click the link, and do whatever it is you want to do. Uh, nobody's judging. Everybody's, uh, everybody's welcome. All right. Now let's move into this because I'm not going to be long. Uh, so I've been at this since 5 o'clock this morning. So it is currently uh, 1.38 my time. Um, still have a lot to do, and I got to hit the gym. Um, um, celebrating, uh, really getting myself together health-wise. For a long time, I spent so much time working, uh, putting things together, doing projects, and, and everything else. I wasn't taking care of myself, so I'm really taking pride in getting uh, back to what used to be my number one focus was my fitness. Um, you know, I look at some of the pictures from just a few years back, and I'm like, man. 
uh, how fast you can easily let yourself go. But I'm proud about that. So I got to get to the gym. Anyway, first up is what's going on at the border with Haitian immigrants. Um, there are so many things to talk about on this level. I'm not going to address them all. I'm going to address one specific thing that I find interesting. Um, as a person who's a part of a group, even though I don't function this way, but I'm a part of a group that I acknowledge, I love, and I refuse to step away from my people, my race, the melanin, uh, rich people. Um, it, it's interesting to see us as a group historically that has voted 90% Democrat and found every reason in the book to malign Trump. And when the Biden administration, the Harris, Biden and Harris were talking about how horrible the conditions were with, with migrants at the border being held in uh, cages and being mishandled and all that, it was uh, Trump was a racist and Trump was doing this and Trump was doing that and all this. And now we have Biden as the president and we have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of immigrants trapped at the border uh, trying to find refuge. They are seeking political refuge, which is important because under international law, uh, they should not be put in situations where they can be harmed. In other words, uh, I read this morning that the first expulsion plane took off taking over 500 Haitians back to Haiti. That's a violation of international law. If a group of people are seeking uh, political refuge, and what political refuge means is that based on a new political uh, reality, their lives have now become in jeopardy. And if you're not aware, uh, the Haitian president, uh, which was making some pretty powerful and strong stands against some uh, westernized uh, capitalist uh, movements that were basically being set up to take place in Haiti was assassinated. Uh, to make things even more interesting, uh, the assassination has been directly linked to a certain uh, part of the U.S. government. For one, notably, and for sure, the DEA. There's also uh, some pretty strong indications that uh, the CIA may be involved, but the DA definitely involved. One of the direct participants was a, a DEA informant. So uh, there you go. But because of this new regime, it is no longer been safe. Now, people have been fleeing Haiti since the original earthquake back, was it 2010? Something like that. And it's just gotten worse with the hurricane and everything. And then with this recent thing, uh, there's been a surge. A lot of them were in parts of Central America and Southern Mexico. And now they've pushed their way towards the United States with hope of finding a better life. You know, that's what this country, uh, you know, sold when they wanted people to come here. They sold bring your, you know, your poor, your wretched masses yearning to be free. Well, you know, uh, that sign no longer says that. Now it says closed, uh, no vacancies. Um, and I'm not making an argument for one way or another. Uh, but what I am saying is I'm, 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 I'm a little uh, not surprised, but a little ticked to see just how quiet we get when we see someone that we mistakenly thought was going to act on our behalf or show something different. Now, my thing is, I told you from day one who this guy was. I did reports. I, I, I pulled records. I pulled receipts. Wasn't anything personal. It was specifically his track record. Told you the same thing about Kamala Harris. Pulled track records. Pulled behaviors. Showed you everything you needed to know about Joe Biden and how he feels about black people, period. And 90% went out. You know what they said? They said, at least it's not Trump. Now, the thing is, I'm not a Trump fan. I'm not a Republican. And I'm not a Democrat. and definitely not a Biden fan. But what I can tell you is we've suffered some of the greatest hits 
to our well-being and to our interests under Democratic administrations. That crime bill was under Clinton and by I mean Clinton and uh, Biden was the senator who authored it, but it was under a Clinton administration. Uh, the disruption of the family nucleus and home under social programs was done under the Johnson administration, despite the warnings by uh, Daniel Patrick Monaghan uh, to use the money that they were going to use for these social programs to uh, create jobs for black men and let black men take care of their families. Uh, this was specifically the idea presented, and it was dismissed and we're still dealing with the ramifications of that. Now, I'm not saying it's that simple, but I'm saying that's what happened. Okay, so, and a lot happened under the Obama administration, actually too much to even get into, uh, but God forbid anybody talk about Barack Obama, uh, then everybody loses their mind. See, we don't want real progress. We just want a black face in a high place. We want to live our lives vicariously through someone else who only looks like us, who does not reside, connect with, or resonate with us, who does not have our interests at heart, who will sell us out in a heartbeat for their own personal gain. It doesn't matter. They look like us. I can sit up and talk about racism in this country. It has to be over. We have a black president. I've told you more than once, I'm going to venture and tell you again. The greatest threat to black progress is a black face with a white agenda. Way more dangerous than a white racist. Far more dangerous than a white racist. So that's the thing is I'm watching how quiet the Biden supporters are when he's he's issued personally issued an order and if i'm not mistaken if i am reading correctly he's using the executive order that trump wrote to deal with the uh mexican uh immigrants that were flooding the borders so the the, the this is hypocritical to me so this isn't just bad policy it's hypocritical policy is sitting up and saying i you i talked about this i downed it. i sit up and talked about how horrible it was to get into office and now that i have the power i'm going to use the same policies that i down talk to execute the exact same thing against other people that i was down uh that i was uh deriding about the person who proceeded now that, 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 that's the thing that gets me, is just how quiet we are. We can't acknowledge it because then we have to sit up and say, we participated in this election. Let, let's not play like, okay, we did it uh, all on our own. But we gave them 90% of something that we claim is so valuable. So many people died for it. And all this other stuff that we love throwing out there to shame people into voting for the lesser of two evils. Evil is evil, and if you're voting for something that doesn't serve you, it doesn't matter which evil you get, you got evil. How about instead of voting for two evils, you start to create a new idea, a new concept, a new reality? How about you force the hand by moving in a collective uh, block towards something different? Why don't you understand that you don't always have to accept what somebody's offering you? That revolution does not come through compliance. It does not come through willing participation. Revolution comes by sitting up and resisting what is being presented as a must. No, not accepting it. That's something that we really and truly need to consider. Second, and then I'll be done. We're going to really have to work on the enemy within. You know, we love to give statistics. We love to talk about Tulsa, uh, Wilmington, and Rosewood, and East St. Louis, and Slocum, and, and all the other towns that were uh, uh, a part of white massacres. We love to talk about the stuff. And I, like I said, I've gave you so much. Uh, in this video series for black wealth that's going to be in the book about ways that they have constantly assaulted us and interrupted our growth 
and stopped our prosperity on purpose. And so I know it and I understand it. And I, I know it's real. And I am a person that has given my heart, my energy, and my time to creating solutions. But let me tell you something. One, of the, one thing that I've told you many times before until we deal with the enemy within, the enemy on the outside will continue to have a hold. It's not until we eradicate the enemy within that the enemy on the outside will be powerless. And that's how we deal with the enemy on the outside is by eradicating the enemy on the inside. In some instances, that's going to mean getting rid of some people and leaving some people behind. In some instances, it's going to mean uh, putting forth the energy and effort to reshape the thinking and the behavior and the habits of others. It's going to in include the proper holistic education of our youth, which represent the next generation. We've got to protect. We've got to cover. We cannot expect them to educate our youth to compete against theirs. It's absolute foolishness to think that's what's going to happen. They've been consistently and purposely undereducating, miseducation, miseducating, indoctrinating, and, and misleading ours. And the few they get through, we get excited about it, but the vast majority are still locked into um, a vicious cycle of poverty because the system isn't designed for them. But we've got to deal with the inside. One way that we need to deal with this is the fact that it's time out for the baby mama syndrome. It's tied out for the single player syndrome. It's time out for all of this procreating and no family home for these children to be birthed into where there's a balanced energy of masculine and feminine being in the home. And there's a set protocol of value systems to be taught to the child that will ultimately prepare them to go out into a world that's hostile towards them and still thrive. That's a problem. We can't ever talk about true empowerment when we are not dealing with the issues within. This whole idea that you can walk around and have single people procreating, creating offspring, and then everybody's doing their own thing. Nobody's fully engaged because everybody's doing their own thing. It's all about me. You can't be all about me and be all about the people. You're going to have to understand that they're going to require some accountability, some responsibility, some real true focus on what needs to be done. There's going to have to be an, a willingness to come together. The idea of perpetual singleness being a new thing is not going to work for us. The idea of, you know, uh, a growing a uh, population of baby mamas is not going to work for us. A, a growing population of incarcerated baby daddies is not going to work for us. This idea that we can co-parent in two different households isn't going to work for us. We're going to have to understand the importance of unity. We're going to have to understand that if we're going to birth a child, we're going to birth it into a healthy environment, a healthy environment where it can get the nurturing and the protection that it needs. That means both parents need to be in the house. We need to go back to it. We need to teach it. We need to redevelop it. We need to rescue it. Yes. It, 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 it's it's on life support, but I tell you what, if it dies, we die with it. Yeah, we don't want to talk about it, but I guarantee you, if we don't deal with this in the next 10 years or less, we might as well clock out. I don't know if you pay attention to what's going on, but we are being set up to take a major blow. We're not even the major major minority anymore. They're not concerned with what's going on. And if you don't realize it, Trump showed them something that should have scared black folks. Trump showed them you could win the presidency without having the black vote. He didn't cater. He talked noise. Now, the crazy thing is what most people don't realize is a lot of the noise he talked was real. He was telling you the Dems are playing you. At least over here, you know what you're getting. But the Dems are playing you. They run in this game on you. They 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 stroking you smooth with their voice and they stab you in the back with a knife. And that's exactly what Dems have done from day one. Again, no fan of Trump or the Republicans. But on from a conservative perspective, less involved now. Uh, all that giving and handout stuff, no, they're not going for it. But we shouldn't be wanting handouts anyway. We should want to be self-sufficient. We should want to own businesses. We should want to have our own financial uh, uh, stability and sufficiency. We should want to be able 
to depend on ourselves because what happens when you're able to depend on yourselves you no longer have to fold and bend over for those who have the ability to help you. You can actually stand up, square your shoulders, and tell them to kiss your ass when you have your own. So now you're you're on you're on square you're on firm a firm foundation. You're on firm a firm footing. And so now you can sit up and move in ways that are beneficial to you and those you care about. You're not having to serve systems that don't serve you. But that has to be something we established within ourselves to do. I just had to drop in. I had to stop. I had to drop this off because it was getting, really, really getting to me, you know, where we're at right now, you know, with what's going on at the border, where we are right now. I just look at the culture. I look at our communities and I look at how happy we are just rolling around with nothing. I mean, it, it, it's like, you know, you know, just just seventy five percent of us waiting on the next tax income check with with, with earn, earned income credit. That's your boost in income. You just wait on earn income credit. And some of them out there actually having babies to increase the income of the assistance they get across the board. Children are not income mechanisms. Children are legacies. They are a part of what will represent us when we're gone. What are we leaving behind if we leave our children in the situations they're currently in? We have to do a better job, and we need to own a lot of what's going on right now. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Like I said, as always, don't forget you can support the work we do at the Odyssey Project from the Research, uh, Research Center, Black Men Leave, Restoring Ghettos, Got Forgotten Daughters, Music is Life Program, the Black Empowerment Initiative, and more. Uh, that's always going to be an option. You can do that and see that in the description box, but you can also um, check out some of the other things that we're doing. Like I said, uh, I would love to have you be a sponsor uh, for... Uh, my 25th book and see, you can celebrate and memorialize whoever you want to in this book uh, check some of that stuff out uh, but anyway I'm going to get ready to get off here but I just had to drop in and have this conversation uh, I guess it's much more of a monologue than a conversation but you get what I'm saying anyway on that note I'm going to get right here get ready uh, all things uh, considered we're starting tomorrow with the Black Voice Reloaded with me and my ace, Michael Jordan. Uh, come Saturday, me and Dr. Michael Blanchard are loading up with uh, a new show we've created, The Teachers. And we come in hard on both of those. I'm excited. I'm tired of talking by myself. It's been a long haul getting back here, but I'm ready to go. And I am like really crazy mad excited about it. So, hey. Everybody line up. Everybody get ready. We're coming at you tomorrow, which is uh, Thursday at 11 a.m. for the Black Voice Reloaded. Uh, this is going to be a radio show uh, dash podcast video, the whole nine. Uh, it's going to be streamed uh, on YouTube um, and maybe a couple of other places, but uh, we are excited about it. I got some other news that is in the uh, growing that I'm uh, excited to share. Uh, it took a lot to get me to do it. Uh, for and When I tell you about it, you'll know why. Uh, but I think I got the terms that I want. But I'm waiting on everything to be fully good. I've learned uh, the hard way. Stop sharing stuff while it's still in the making. You literally got people who are spiritually uh, throwing daggers to uh, frustrate your efforts. So, but but hey, uh, you know we're on the we, we we're on the comeback. So on that note, look, take care of yourselves. Uh, you guys have an unbelievable time. I'm about to check out. Peace. <laughs>